I think that is very human to be curious. And so much of what I've tried to do is driven by curiosity. The questions that I ask are questions that every child asks. However, I think we do a pretty good job of essentially eliminating that curiosity from most people. Since I'm particularly enthralled by and amused uh, with the everyday world, it's relatively easy to find questions by just looking outside the window, taking a walk. I have far more questions than I can potentially answer. Some of the questions that I've studied in the past include figuring out how the brain folds, understanding how flags flutter, understanding the mathematics of origami, understanding how animals move, and trying to basically see how mathematics allows for a way to move from one problem to another, looking for general principles. There's a different approach that one can take to mathematics, which is to think of it as a very, very powerful language, perhaps the most powerful language that we know, that allows you to try and describe the world, try to predict the world. You can use it as a writer does uh, and write prose. You can use it potentially as a poet does. A poet often breaks rules. An important aspect of this is not to worry too much about where it will lead. So I don't really have a broad agenda. One thing that I have learned to become comfortable with is to recognize failure and be comfortable with failing at most questions that I start out to try and address. Um, but because there is no dearth of questions associated with understanding the behavior of matter on the everyday scale, either in the physical world or in the biological world, it's not really a problem because there are so many questions.